Hey, what's up? Today I want to talk with you about how every project looks like a hammer problem when the only tool that you have in the shed is a hammer. Now, what I mean by that is when you only know one framework, all the use cases for your freelance work, for your personal projects, everything looks like it would be best to do with that framework. But that's not true. When I first started web development, I think like most people, I got into HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you know, put that together, put it all up on the web and that's, you know, the functioning website. And then the first library, not framework, I guess you call it library, I got into is React. And I did like a 12 hour React course. And after that, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go deeper into React. So that was the first thing I've ever gotten used to, not Vue, not anything else, not Angular, just React. And for a long time, that was the only thing I did because I thought, you know, React is good at everything. I don't need to learn anything else. And chances are, if you're watching this video and are maybe subscribed to the channel, you are proficient in React and probably Next.js as well. I'm not sure if you know other stuff. Many people do, but some people don't. And I was one of the people who didn't know much else than React. Now that has changed, but when you only know one thing, everything looks like it's best to do with that one thing. And then even if you move on to something like Next.js, a meta framework that makes working in React even better with a better developer experience and more versatile, you can solve more problems in a faster way. For example, especially important in Next.js is the image optimization. So you get pretty fast website speeds and amazing um, possibilities for anything that requires large, large applications. Like you can build whole companies just on Next.js. It works just fine. And then there are tools like Svelte. Now, chances are you've maybe never worked with Svelte. Many people did, but it's still kind of an underdog, even though it's gotten a lot of po popularity in the last, you know, months or years. There's now a thing called Svelte Kit. And I think learning multiple tools like that can really make your life as a developer way easier. Because for freelance projects like I'm doing right now, I'm not using Next.js anymore. And that is because I think Svelte Kit or Svelte or something entirely different like Astro, for example, or SolidJS also works. I remember this guy commenting that SolidJS is his, uh, is his new jam. And uh, it makes a lot of sense learning um, many frameworks as a developer. Yes, it's hard, but if you know React, then translating between something like React and Svelte is not hard. Now, implementing interactivity is kind of a different story. And many people say that specifically in Svelte, the developer experience is really good. I don't really agree. I think it's better in React because much more stuff is supported in React, especially regarding TypeScript usage. I think it's way better. But having multiple tools in your arsenal allows you to choose the best one for whatever project you're realizing. So for small websites, for freelance projects that are mainly front-end based, I think Svelte is just the way to go instead of Next.js because the performance is better. So let's compare Next.js to Svelte Kit directly. And that's what I did. I first did this freelance project right here in um, React or Next.js. And the performance on Lighthouse was about, you know, 88, 89. It was always in the yellow. And this project, the Wordful front end, is pretty well optimized. It has code splitting, it has images, like the next image. It's really well optimized and I don't think Next.js gets much better than, you know, the high yellow area in Lighthouse, that being like 88, 89, maybe even 90. But I've never achieved 100. If you did, make sure to let me know. I'd be really interested in seeing how you achieve that. I never managed to do that with Next.js. However, with Svelte or Solid or Astro, that is very much possible. And I cannot understate the importance of website speed when working with clients. In fact, I've got a funny anecdote to tell. The first freelance client I've ever got was for a WordPress website. So before getting into actual coding, I did WordPress stuff with Elementor. If you know what WordPress is, chances are you also know what Elementor is. And WordPress is notoriously slow. Now, not every WordPress site is, but most of them are. And that client paid like a really cheap price for her website. I massively undersold on the effort and, you know, on the price that I gave her. It was like $750 or euros. 
and she expected some insane speed from that website. That was not possible with um, WordPress and the images she wanted on the website. It just didn't match together. It wasn't possible. However, if you use something like ACMS with SvelteKit or with Astro or SolidJS, that is very much possible. You can achieve 100, 100, 100, 100 metrics in Lighthouse. Everything is at 100. It's beautiful. Now, obviously, Lighthouse sometimes differs a bit. Sometimes it's a bit more. Sometimes you only get like 97, 98. But the point being, clients realize, wow, this website is actually fast, which is very important in modern websites. And you can, if you're doing freelance specifically, but you also benefit from that in personal projects, you can increase the price of a website by quite a bit if you can guarantee the client that it's really fast and also demonstrate that to the client. And that's the reason I switched away from Next.js for anything that doesn't require either a lot of packages because I think, you know, if you want good packages available for your project, you go with React because everything supports React, especially in TypeScript. However, if it's front end heavy, I recommend going the other route, not going with Next.js or React, but actually trying out something new. And if you're not used to anything else like Svelte or Solid, the syntax is not that hard. They have guides, they have tutorials. Um, translating between those frameworks and React is pretty intuitive. Um, so you might want to try it out. Just give it a shot, see how far you can go, how far you can push up the page speed um, with a new framework, even though sometimes it is really not as comfortable as Next.js, you do get better speed results in them. And that's just a quick little tip I wanted to talk about with you. Um, if you're proficient in other frameworks than React or Next.js, I'd be really happy if you let me know below which ones those are. I'm always interested in hearing about that. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very interested in your opinion on this. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.